this is Amy with Flower Moxie, and today I'm going to show you how to make a brass wrist corsage and my favorite pin-on corsage. So for a brass wrist corsage, the materials that you'll need is a brass cuff, this one's two inches, a paper towel, and some floral adhesive. So usually you know that I'm not too snobby about glue versus hot glue, floral glue, but for the brass cuff, I think that you definitely need the floral adhesive because I think floral glue, or I'm sorry, hot glue, will separate from the, from the brass. So, um, and then you'll need some scraps of flowers. So to get started, the way that I always like to do it is I put down a little piece of paper towel. I cut it um, to be about the size of like my initial flowers and then I cut off the edges just so I don't have to worry about hiding those. The reason, so I'm going to get going with the glue first and then I'll tell you why I use paper towel in the first place. I feel like the paper towel is a better substrate to get started. I got a little bit too much. This stuff is really runny. It's like working with honey. And it takes a bit to set up, so be a little bit more conservative than I just was. I got excited. It's the first of the video. Okay, so I start with this paper towel substrate and then I start with my greenery. And I think I'll come in with some leather leaf. Well, maybe this is a little eucalyptus leaf. And so what you wanna avoid when you're making this is to lay, like you don't wanna layer in a bunch of junk, kind of like a bird's nest. Um, you wanna keep, you wanna keep your foundation pretty clean. And so I always start with my greenery and I'm really just taking what I need and cutting away the rest. And of course that looks completely crazy, but we're not going to see that once I layer in my blooms. And so I'll position it and kind of just move things around to see where I want to place it. I bring in a little bit of this floral glue And so I'm trying to get some coverage first and then I'll come in with my blooms. Yeah, I like how that is. So see how, how I don't want this extra stem? Because when I lay down a bloom, the stem will probably prevent it from adhering well. One good thing to note, because if you're DIYing this, you'll probably have a new bottle of this floral, floral adhesive. And as you can see, I'm keeping it upright because it's really bad about coming out of the tube and getting on your workspace. You, just a side note, you can make these two days in advance, and I want you to make them two days in advance because um, if you get this glue on your fingers, it's hard to get off, and you wanna make sure that you get your manicure after you're done with your glue work. So now I have a piece of this leather leaf. Leather leaf is great because you have so many just small leaves that you can um, pull off of a main stem and that's always helpful. And in the end, I'll tell you how to store this if you make it two days in advance so it lasts. Now this glue, it does take a while to set up. Um, but what I like about it is that I can still shift it around. Where hot glue, it, it dries a lot faster. It's not as forgiving. So this ranunculus is absolutely huge. Um, I love it. So for the flowers that you wanna use, you wanna use flowers that you can cut really short and has like a basically like a flat foundation once you cut the stem away. So standard roses, standard carnations, they won't work. The profile is much too large. It would be much too hard to glue it down. So my favorite flowers to use would be um, spray roses, ranunculus, and button mums. So those little button palms, they're actually my favorite and I don't have any, but I do have some cushion flower. We're gonna work with that. So 
we use this thing in a styled shoe that's completely blown open. It's a bit too big and I'm gonna bring it down a little bit because it would pretty much just fit that and then the video would be over. So I know that you probably want a little bit more for your money. So first of all, I'm gonna cut the stem to the base and that one was wired, which is fine. And this is the hardest thing to get used to as a, as a florist. Sometimes you have to take things apart. And I'm gonna start pulling these petals off, which is kind of painful for my heart because it's a beautiful flower. It's a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna come in with the scissors so I won't just completely destroy the flower. I just don't need so much of it. And this is why the button palms are so perfect, is they're always the right size, they always have that really flat bottom and back to work with. If you want a small ranunculus, don't leave them out, so they'll stay tight. Pop them in the fridge. Okay, this guy's a little bit more manageable and we're gonna set him off to the side. I'm gonna cut a little bit more away. Yeah, here we go. And we had already wired this one, so I'm gonna pull the wire out. And make sure I get a really flat surface. Okay, now we're gonna come in with this glue. And I load it down pretty good, but still be careful because this stuff is super runny. I've pushed him a little bit off to the side and I know that I don't need these petals. It's truly easier when you're working with a ranunculus that hasn't been out for several days. Wax flower works really well, status. You don't wanna use anemones. Uh, Lysianthus buds work well, but I feel like Standard Lysianthus, like the full bud, might be a little bit too delicate. It won't hold up through the evening. So now I have this cushion flower. So this is one that I had pulled out because um, it, one side, it lost its petals, and that works for me because I can push it up against that ranunculus. So it kind of goes back to nothing is trash until the very end. And I'll hold it in place to see if I like that placement. I feel like I do. We're conservative with our squeezing. And we're gonna nestle this guy in. We still have a hole, but we're not worrying about that because we're not done. So these little guys, I absolutely love. These are ranun ranunculus buds. And I often pull them off because they're way lower on the stem and it's weird to work with them in a bouquet. So I pull them off and I save them because they work amazingly well for, um, yeah, a little handy work like this. That's too pink. So I'm gonna come in with a little bit more greenery. And I used to, I used to not enjoy doing the small detailed things. I liked like big installations, but this has grown on me for sure. So 
So I start gauging how short or long to cut something at the end. And so I like the size and placement of this. And so now I'm starting to cover up the weirdness. And I like that this guy is a little bit off to the side. Again, I didn't just want like a huge ranunculus right in the center. I mean, you can do it. I'm not gonna judge you and it'll still be pretty. And let's come in with another little bud. Sometimes I like, I'm spinning it so it won't drip off. Okay, and I'm liking where this is going. I have a little hole here, but before I fill it up, I think I wanna backfill with like maybe some sprigs of greenery. We'll see if that works. This is Gunny Eucalyptus. As you can see, it takes so little product to build these. So sometimes I have, we have clients email and they're like, I need to change my order because I've added two corsages. I'm like, you're fine. You're just really using the, the trash at this point. Um, so that's why you save everything. The reason why corsages and boutonnieres cost so much when you purchase them from a florist is just the time and the technique of just sitting and building them, but it doesn't take a lot of product. These are a fun way to get started, I think. See how I hid some weirdness by put it, pushing that little gunny eucalyptus down in? So I like really like thin stemmed items. And I don't know, I feel like I'm gonna come back with one more bud. I think I love these things so much. And have him upright. So like I said, you can make this two days in advance and I'll show you how to store it. But before you store it in the fridge and in the hydration chamber, which I'm gonna show you, um, ah, you'll want to let this sit out in the open elements for at least an hour so this fussy glue can set up. If you've watched my other videos, I'm not the biggest fan of this glue, but it is useful. I love it so much. I love these little clothes buds. So I'm gonna be pretty gentle with it, but I wanna kind of circle around and see if I have any weirdness or holes, and I feel like I have one here. So now I just get to figure out what I, what I wanna stick there. And I may want some yeah, I like the seeded eucalyptus texture. I'll put this beneath me because this is super thin. I'm trying to save my Ikea table. Okay. So you just drive this little stem in. You can kind of feel it catching on something. And that's just kind of filling in that little hole and because I love baby blue eucalyptus so much, I'm gonna to try to find a place for it. Yeah, I found a place for you. I always find a place. <laughs> All right. I love it so much. Okay, so this is the brass wrist cuff. If you're gonna make it for family members, you may wanna ask them in advance if they have a sensitivity to brass on their skin. I know that some people do. Uh, and we're gonna let this sit out for an hour before we pop it in the fridge and in our fancy hydration chamber. So that's the brass wrist cuff. Let's move on to the pin-on. Has very, very similar, um, oh, that got crunchy. Similar technique, a lot of gluing. So what you do is you start with some soft cardboard and you fold it in half. And this is a plastic poster board. I thought I'd be fancy for the video, but in all reality, I typically like to use like, look, like the soft cardboard that you would see like for 
LaCroix, like your, like a case of LaCroix, or um, I like fruit snacks, so I feel like that's always soft cardboard. <laughs> My husband's always like, why are you taking everything out of the containers? <laughs> Why is our stuff all cut up in the pantry? So I'm just cutting this down and making, I always like to cut off the corners. And you can make it smaller than what I'm making it. We'll just go a little bit smaller. Or you can be large and in charge. You know I'm always in favor of that. Okay, so we've got paddle wire here or you can use straight wire, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I folded it in half and I'm putting the wire like so and closing it. And then I'm gonna bring it up and just twist it around a few times so it's secure. Okay, pretty easy. And then I'm gonna take a safety pin and you'll open it and you'll take one tail and you'll wrap it around a few times. And then you'll take the other tail and do the same thing. Because it's wire, you don't have to tie it or like you're done. Flip it away because it, it's not going anywhere. I try to get it as close as possible. I don't want a lot of length because I'm gonna have to cover my mechanics up with some greenery. And go ahead and close that safety pin. As you can see, it will pin easily to her dress. You don't have to deal with straight pins. And what's nice is you can go through and pin it to her bra strap. That way it won't be sliding on her. So these are for people who don't like things on their wrist. And so then you're gonna glue it together. I'm just gonna trim this awkwardness off. Obviously I'm very good at shapes. <laughs> so you can use hot glue, but basically we're gluing this together. And I basically fold it in half just for security. It keeps the wire from slipping out. I don't trust glue and wire by itself. No matter how conservative I am, I always get a little bit that spills out of the side every, every single time. So be conservative. Okay. You can use hot glue, I feel, like a low temperature hot glue gun. Um, you would just put the glue down and let it set up first. So you don't wanna, it's extremely hot, like so you don't wanna get like your mother's 1980s hot glue gun that like burns your flesh off. Just get like a little one from Michael's or the Hobby Lobby. So when I start with these, um, I work to cover up that safety pin first. And we still want to keep a pretty clean foundation. I honestly should have cut that shorter. Just learn from my mistakes. And if you find yourself just, um, if this glue is getting away from you, one thing that you can do is put it on like a little plastic or paper plate and dip your stems into it. So I have another ranunculus, super open, super sexy. I don't have to cut quite as much off. It's not quite as big, but I am gonna cut it down just so it fits easier. If this is painful for you to watch, I understand. <laughs> it's painful to do it. Anytime I bring in like someone new to design, they're always like, you want me to do what? It's so perfect. Okay, this is looking a lot better. I'm gonna cut this as close as I can to the bottom, pull off any loose things, and we're gonna load it up with the glue. Okay. 
a little bit too liberal. And we're gonna pop this guy down. Okay, let's come in with some spray roses. So I'll often pull off what I call the collar, at least on the side that I know it's going to be laying on. So I'm gonna work on my placement and kind of see where I like it. But before, I do notice that I wanna cover up these edges first with some greenery. Sometimes you gotta clean the top of it off. And paper towel's lovely for that job. Okay, so I'm gonna take the entire collar off so it can fit in a little bit more snug. This is a little Rubicon spray rose. And I'm gonna test my placement. Cut this a little bit shorter. And I'll usually load the glue down on the side it's going to lay as well as the stem. Just that way I can get, make sure I get the max surface area. Each time I tell myself, you're gonna make these and not get glue on your hands this time, <laughs> never happens. And so I'm just gonna start filling in this little space. One thing that I always love to use are little closed buds. So this is a little closed spray rose bud. Um, I love ranunculus buds as I've just talked about. So we're gonna use one of these. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see it a little bit better. And we're gluing. <laughs> So this is a bit unusual and you can get away with it with carnations only, but they're, they're very, very hardy. And sometimes when I'm working with um, corsages and I just wanna put in like a few little embellishments, not like a big flower, you can take apart, deconstruct a carnation and use the little petals. I just think that they're lovely. And it was actually Passion Flower Sue. I saw that on one of her tutorials. So. I didn't come up with this idea myself, it was her. So I wanna give her credit, and if you're not following her, you should, because she's absolutely lovely. And she's highly, highly creative. So I'm gonna come in with this little carnation petal it's getting real gluey. Just to kind of create a little bit of a foundation and then I'll come back with a ranunculus bud because I can't help myself. I just love them so much. But instead of greens, I think this petal will be really pretty. I'll just give more of the plum shade that I'm wanting. And many carnations have fantastic buds as well. So. Once you start looking, you'll see all these little bits and bobs that you wanna keep and use in your boots and corsages. So 
Sorry, I'm shaking. That Starbucks didn't do me any favors. And I'm gonna test the length of this. Yep, and that's about what I want. Floral glue is a little bit like hot glue. You'll have little cobwebs, glue cobwebs everywhere, and you, it's easy to clean up. Okay, so here's my pin on corsage. And it's probably gonna take another hour for both of these to set up. So don't put them in the fridge right away. Let them dry completely. Okay, so once you've built your corsages, your boutonnieres, your floral crowns, anything that can't be in water, you can make it up to two days in advance if you keep it in a hydration chamber. And that's really a fancy word for some Tupperware and a damp paper towel. And so, once this dries for an hour and you know that it's fully dried, I don't think that it dries as well in, in, when it's in this environment, so we want it to dry first. You will put your corsages in there, seal it up, and you'll pop it in your fridge. Make sure you raise the, your refrigerator temperature a little bit. You know how you can always make it colder or warmer. You wanna make it a little bit on the warmer side just so you don't accidentally freeze any of your um, flowers, and it will keep up to two to three days.